Good evening, Fernwood. Come on in. Let's do this thing where we watch Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman together. My name's Neil, in case you didn't catch that, because I didn't put it out. And here it is, I put it out. We are about to watch the May 7th, 1976 episode. We had a few different beats hit yesterday, so just let's do that recap that I like to do so much. It started with Kathy coming to Mary with some forgiving energy based on some maybe manipulation that uh, she has received or maybe some Dennis gaming the system as far as Martha was concerned. Anyway, basically, Kathy and Mary have made up, but also Kathy is still thinking that she's going to get married to Dennis. So that puts a little bee in Mary's bonnet. Then at the factory, Tom gets a vaguely threatening-ish message from Ed McCullough that the meeting that Tom had with the assistant DA is not a secret and other people involved with the union know what's going on. Then on her way to see Dennis, Mary is interrupted by Betty McCullough, the McCullough mother who moved into the Fetters home. Betty does a tarot reading on Mary for no charge at all, apparently, but you know, they're setting up a reading to do that. I guess the first hit is free. That, of course, sets Mary up to go off to Dennis, and she tells him what she sees going on. Fairly honestly, I think she's about as clear-headed in that scene as I think I've seen her in a long time, maybe ever. Of course, Dennis still is shoving towards Thursday as a way to keep Kathy from getting married. So those are all of the beats that I can recall. There may be some other stuff in there, but let's just get started on this Friday episode, May 7th, 1976's episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Her 
friends are coming here? Well, yes, we can't have it at our house. I mean, Kathy would see all the preparations and everything, and then it wouldn't be a shower. It wouldn't be a surprise. What, what's wrong, Mary? Don't you want this for your very own little baby sister? I just don't see how you can have a, uh, a wedding shower. And a voucher wear party combined. Unless you're sure if the wedding is on. Oh, but I am sure. Everybody's sure. Um, Kathy and Dennis. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean we're not sure of the dates. Oh, uh, well, don't you worry your head about that. Mm, there. Because that will all be settled next Thursday. I've got to go now. I have so many things to do. Oh, I have two of the most wonderful daughters in the whole wide world. I am standing here in such a state of confusion that if I could cut to a commercial now, I would. Meta! Now that is quite a spread you got there, Ed. What is that, up? A roast beef sandwich? Mm -hmm. Must be two inches thick. You want one? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Loretta, that's my wife. She fixes a good lunch. Usually. What is that? <laughs> to find, no. Must be nourishing, though, I'm sure. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom, over here. Come on, man. I just have a coffee. Come on, sit down. Sit down. Take these. Take these. Listen, I got more than I can use. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. I left this morning with, before Mary could pack my lunch, you know. Uh, uh, Tom, if you don't mind my saying so, that is a mistake. And wives like to do for husbands. You know, they, they like to feel like they're taking care of us. I mean, that, 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 you run off like that and, and you deprive Mary of a very important part of her life. Oh, come on, Charlie. Will you? No, I'm, I'm only trying to help. I really am. I mean, Ed could back me up if he was married. You're not, are you, Ed? Mm. Ever been? Nope. Say, so what's uh, new with the investigation? Not a damn thing. How about your brother? What about him? Has he ever been married? I mean, I know he's not now because he's living with you and your mother and all, but I was just wondering if he was divorced or something like that. No, he isn't. <clears throat> I hear the uh, super's been coming down on your tail pretty hard lately, huh? Yeah, Pop Billings, they've really been coming down hard. How did you know about that? Oh, I just hear things, uh, like, uh, for instance, he's related to the finance secretary. You're kidding. Second cousins. Wow, uh, damn, can you believe it? How about girlfriends? Huh? How about, I mean, I was just thinking that Loretta or Mary or somebody could fix up Ed and his brother with a couple of dates. I'll let you know, Charlie. Sure, sure, Ed, anytime. <laughs> what? Guess what I just heard. What? One of the old cronies was talking to me. He told me that he heard from a guy who doesn't want his name mentioned that Bill Curley wants to see you. Can you beat that? That is the finance secretary of our union, and that is how he operates. He tells a guy who doesn't want his name mentioned to tell one of the old cronies to tell George to tell you. Now, that ain't right. You're damn right it ain't. Well, be that as it may. Tom, I hope you didn't bite off something you can't chew. Listen, I gotta get back on the line. So so finish that sandwich, huh? So soon? Yeah, I'm breaking into the press. Watch yourself with that super tongue. Yeah. What did he mean by that? He means that Pop Billingsley had been laying demerits on me right and left. That's you know what else he told us? He told us that Billingsley and Bill Curley are related. Now, can you feature that? Now, look at that. That is Billingsley, the super of the line who negotiates for management, and Bill Curley, the finance secretary of our union who negotiates for us, and they're related. You know something, Tom? I don't trust Ed. There is something fishy about that guy. You notice how he always stays by himself, and yet he seems to know more about what's going on in this plant than anybody else. Hey, George, listen, what's that message you got for me? When, when, when am I supposed to see Curley? This afternoon. I don't know. Doesn't sound good to me, Tom. You don't think there's going to be any more rust up, do you? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? You better eat your spinach. You want a nourishing sandwich? What the hell is that? Penicillin? Tom and Heather they have ever had in their life. A cup of 
soup, Oscar Mayer sandwiches, and my very famous royal gelatin dessert. They are going to have a lunch fit for a king and a princess. Oh, Mr. McCullough. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, I was just putting away some uh, groceries. Is there anything wrong? Well, I hope it doesn't sound too strange, but... Well, come on in. Did you... Did you report my mother to the police? The police? Yes. No, I mean, why would I do uh, a thing like that? Listen, would you like some coffee? Because I know how upsetting it is when a close relative is reported to the police. No. Would you? No, no, no. Would you like some decaffeinated if you're worried about coffee nerves no, or anything no, no. like maybe that? Maybe later, maybe later, you see. Last night, a complaint was lodged against my mother with the Fernwood police for soliciting without a license. Oh, no. I'm afraid so. Is she a hooker? Oh, no, 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 no. It was for uh, fortune telling. Oh. 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 Fortune telling. Yes, yes, yes. You see, it's against the law if you don't have a license. Well, anyway, this morning we received a call from the police saying that they weren't going to arrest her. Thing, but if there were any further incidents, they might be forced to take action. Oh, well, I, I, I didn't do anything. I would never do it. I mean, I didn't call the police. I didn't even know it was against the law. I mean, I really like you, Mother. I think she's a really nice, sweet lady, and she's been very kind to me, and I would just never do anything like that. No, I, I didn't think you'd turn her in, Mrs. Hartman. No, I, you're too nice, and uh, you get too much on your mind to... Run to the police with something as trivial as tarot cards and fortune telling. Trivial? What do you mean I have too much on my mind? Oh, well, I... You know, I must tell you, I do not find that what your mother does to be trivial. I don't find that trivial. I mean, she she was very helpful to me. I mean, she told me things that were very revealing. Very revealing. Well, she did, huh? Yes. Very revealing and very disturbing. She didn't upset you. Well, she told me the truth is what she did. And I mean, you know, she told me as much of the truth as she could. We just had a short amount of time. But I'm sure that it will be disturbing when she gives me my complete astrological chart. Well, look, uh, I wouldn't take that too seriously. No. What, the truth? No, 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 mother's work. Oh, well, I know what you mean, don't take it too seriously, yeah. Well, don't worry about that. I mean, no matter what she says, I'll be able to laugh at it because that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> yeah, like that. Do you mind if I ask you a question? A little personal question here. Do you, what kind of work do you do? Oh, oh I'm a computer uh, programmer, but um, I'm temporarily out of work since we moved. Oh, well, that must be very interesting work. Well, no, actually, it's very boring, but I expect something to turn up in the next couple of weeks. Say, look, I, um, I apologize for barging in on you when you look so harried. I do? Oh, oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. I meant, well, just busy. No, actually, you're right. I mean, actually, I am harried right now. I mean, I'm having, I'm having some problems with my husband. He's having some problems with his union. I'm having some problems with my husband himself, you know, just him and me. And my little sister, Kathy is going to marry, it looks like, a man who is quite infatuated with me. You know, it's really crazy. I can't believe I'm telling you all this. I mean, you are just a total stranger. Could you just tell me, what do you mean by Harry? What do you mean, bags under my eyes or what? You know what, I think we just have a automatic communication between us. You do? An automatic communication? So would you like some coffee? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I better take a rain check on that. Uh. Oh, that's okay. You have a rain check. It'll be right here waiting for you. Okay, good. See the phone company's coming in, the uh, furnace repair man, and I I really think I should be there when they when they arrive, but I'll drop in again if I may. Oh, oh hello, Ed. Uh, or is it Howard? <laughs> Mary, is it all right if I store some of these things over here? Here, I, you know, I don't have any more room at home, and I'm still baking. Oh my! I forgot all about Kathy's shower. Here, let me, let me take that, okay? Yeah. Thank 
Okay. You don't want the shower, do you? I don't understand you, Mary Hartman, and I guess I never will. I just thought I'd better make a list for Kathy's shower before I forget everything. That's a great idea, really. <laughs> Would you look at here? I have been looking everywhere for this thing. Aren't I just terrible? <laughs> and I was just thinking, you know, uh, we can have a sing along after the Belcher wear part. Great idea. Anything you say, honey. <laughs> but Loretta. Not too many spirituals, because, you know, Kathy isn't very religious. Well, you know, maybe she should be. I mean, it's a miracle and all, you know, what with this on-again, off-again marriage being on again. Oh, it was never off. There was just a little confusion about Dennis's nature. Oh, you mean him Still kissing is. everybody? Yes, he's such a sweet and loving boy, but Mary has explained it all. Which is another miracle, if you ask me. Which, of course, nobody did. But anyway, what I planned is a little medley, you know, for the singing. And I thought I'd start out with Put Your Hand in the Hand. And then also um, my own version of Convoy, which is about trucks. Oh, yes, Loretta, that's just fine. Just fine. Now, I know all this missionary work, you know, is becoming very important to you. But I don't think Kathy's shower is the right place, you know, to convert everybody. Mrs. Shumway, have you been newly baptized? Well, not lately. I was sprinkled when I was a little girl. Now, how long is that guaranteed for? Hi, honey, I'm home. Oh, Hi, Martha. Hi. How are you? Fine. Hi, baby. Mm -hmm. Baby boy. How are you, sweetness? We was just planning Kathy's shower. For tonight, you know, at Mary's house because the, the carpeting is newer. Tonight? Mm-hmm. See, Tom didn't say nothing about it. Of course, he had his mind all on this uh, this meeting he's got with the finance secretary of the union down at the local. Oh, I hope he doesn't get into another one of those terrible fights. Oh, now, don't you worry a bit, Mrs. Shumway. Tom's not going to do nothing like that now. Who says so? The way Tom's been acting lately, I wouldn't put nothing past him. And frankly, if you ask me... Uh, nobody asks you, uh, honey, about your baby boy. <laughs> Oh, well, now that's all right. I want to know. I have to know. After all, it is my family. Oh, well, uh, it's just that uh, I think that Tom is becoming this fighting corruption buster, maybe on account of uh, he's got a problem at home he don't want to take a look at. I mean, some, some people, some men find it uh, easier to take on the union and the management both rather than take on a, a wife at home. <laughs> You don't think he's doing it because of Mary? I, I don't want to say anything that's not my business, Martha, but but everybody knows that uh, it ain't exactly been Gable and Lombard time next door. But, Charlie, you do think it will work out all right, oh, don't you? He sure does. He sure mm -hmm. does, honey. Yeah. I mean, eventually, Tom is going to have to learn to sit back and take it just like everybody else, won't he? Take what? Imperfection. Mary isn't perfect, Tom isn't perfect, the union isn't perfect, management isn't perfect. Life is hell. Tom will have to learn that, won't he? He sure will. He sure will. <laughs> because there is no sense butting your head into a stone wall. It, it only bashes your skull. And the sooner people learn that, the better. Amen. <laughs> well... I suppose I should go home and check on my potato salad. <laughs> well, now, now, I'll see both of you in about an hour or so, huh? Are you sure we will, Miss Shumway? Okay. And thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't you worry about anything, baby boy. Oh, okay. uh, bye, Charlie. Bye, Mark. <laughs> okay, we'll see you later. Charlie Hackers, I cannot believe it, honey. I swear to Pete, sometimes you don't act like you got an ounce of sense in that head of yours. That woman is upset and everything, and you go running off telling her all that stuff. Honey, I just said what happened. I mean, it was natural conversation. Charlie Hagers, the good book says, keep your mouth shut if what you got to say ain't a comfort to somebody. Now, 
where does it say that? Well, I don't know exactly where, Charlie, but I know it says it somewhere. Trust me, honey, because I know that book cover to cover, just like I know you. But let me tell you what happened today, all right? Okay. Well, Mrs. Shumway and I planned this fabulous Belcher Wear surprise shower party for Cap, you know, kind of combined together. Then, earlier today, I called up the World Missionary Center, and they're going to send me all their Action 76 literature, and I'm going to get to meet Reverend Jimmy Joe. Reverend Jimmy Joe is self. Well, maybe not a self, but probably his daddy, you know, because he's probably in school or something like that. But they's real excited about my doing work for the Lord with them. Honey, can you talk with me for a minute? Well, sure, honey. I'm talking with you now. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I have never been against anything that you set your mind to and your heart to. Now, you know that. But this... This missionary business. Surely, honey, you never, you never been against my religious faith or work before. No, honey, I know, and I'm not now. I mean, I know how much the good Lord has done for you and me, but it's just this, this, this Reverend Jimmy Joe Cheetah you're getting yourself mixed up with. I mean, the Lord works in strange and mysterious ways is one thing, honey, but, but, but sermons from an eight-year-old kid with a Beatles haircut and taps on his shoes. And a little child shall lead them, Charlie. Yeah. Except that I, I just don't get nothing holy from an eight-year-old kid. But you will, darling. You will. Honey, when you see Reverend Little Jimmy Joe up there backed by the 101-voiced Fountain of Light Holy Choir. Of course, they only got 17 right now, but they're recruiting, and I'm going to be one of them. <laughs> anyway, oh, honey, i got to apologize for something. What? Dinner. There ain't none. See, I was just so busy, you know, I never did get around to going to the market. But I'm going to call up Pioneer Takeout, and we'll order us something. I'm going to pay for it at my money. And while we're waiting for it to come, I'm going to rehearse some tunes that I've been, you know, working on. Let's see, there's The Rugged Cross, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, and that old Bayou favorite, Jambalaya. Lots of tiny little beats. I mean, we had four scenes, but at least a couple things happened in each scene. So if I forget anything, I apologize and I'll do my best to address it when it becomes pertinent or maybe gets a little more focused. We started with the preparation for Kathy's shower, a Belcher wear party. I know that uh, when Martha was first thinking about it, she had called it Tupperware. I'm not sure because this show has typically just shown brands fairly uh, fairly openly, like actual brands. I'm not sure how uh, product placement may have been considered in this period. I, I think it was a lot looser than it might be now. Or then it's definitely fairly tight right now. That's why so many shows use fake brands at this point. But a Belcher wear party because, you know, when you open up the Tupperware it makes a little belch sound. So uh, so that is the plan, but you know, maybe that doesn't focus on Martha being so happy that Kathy and Mary have made up. Of course, we know there's more complexity beyond that. Then we cut to a scene in the factory with Ed and Charlie and Tom being really friendly to each other. I was surprised based on how surly Ed McCullough had been during his first appearance that and even last time I kind of thought he was making a threat but apparently he's fairly on friendly terms with Tom and Charlie so we'll see but he seems to be hearing some of the buzz that's going on even though he's somewhat of a loner in the factory and there's probably a second beat that I don't quite remember what's happening because there's so much going on the third scene was with the other McCullough son which is leave Howard if I'm not forgetting that name and as I mentioned first time we saw him there's some kind of connection between him and Mary a little bit of chemistry I think that they're starting to notice it out loud 
Apparently, Betty McCullough has had the police called on her for being a fortune teller. Oh, no. We also, I also forgot the thing where Mary just tossed the cake on the floor. Mm. And that was before we got to the scene at the factory. Anyway, we're in order. There's a lot of things going on. Then Martha at Loretta's place trying to make arrangements for the shower because that's literally what she's doing today. And also uh, some suggestion from Charlie that the reason that Tom is getting involved in union business is the relationship at home with Mary. I'm not 100% sure that I would agree with that, but I can see that that would be a way to see it. Because I know the way that I've assessed Tom is that he needs to prove his manhood. Now, he's not proving his manhood at home necessarily with Mary in a sexual way, based on episodes and episodes of observation. But where he can be kind of manly is in this position at work. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but that's to me what I see, because definitely he feels a little bit weaker in terms of his need to prove himself as a man. But, you know, everyone's going to have a point of view and things get maybe a little more chaotic when we just say things that might be true or maybe some observation that we believe, but anyway, this show is this show because people are complicated and you know that's something that i am appreciating that was the may 7th 1976 episode of mary hartman mary hartman thank you so much for spending some time with me and we will see you next week in fernwood <laughs>